All right, instantly, let's start the video with an instant disclaimer. I'm a very positive person. Seriously, I honestly believe that anything you set your mind to, you can achieve. But if I hear one more person say to a new streamer that in order to get those first few viewers, they need to start a YouTube channel, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. And don't even get me started on this new age follow for follow crap that people are doing in the comments sections of videos. Oh, come check me out and I'll check you out. Drop your link here. It, that's just all people want there is people to come check them out. They're not checking you out. So let's talk some practical advice. Let's get this shit going. Let's get you guys to your 10 average viewers. Probably more if you do this properly. Hello, my name's LJ and today I'm gonna give you five tips to grow your first 10 viewers and actually make it so they keep coming back and form a community that will grow on its own if you keep doing these things. I promise to give you an example for every single tip about how I used it myself to grow. These aren't follow for follows, these aren't get viewers quick schemes, and they will work if you actually put the hard yards in, I promise. These five tips are the five things that I used to go from starting a fresh Twitch channel with zero viewers to 60 days later averaging 25 viewers, okay? And I know that's not the fastest, but that's just what I did. I started my stream very first day of March 2020, and 20 days later on March 20th, I was affiliate, I had 15 average viewers, and I had 50 followers. And this isn't fancy stuff, anyone can do these things. If you're curious where I am now, I'm sitting at 95 average viewers midway through July of 2020, I have 1,020-ish followers, it goes up and down by one or two, and it's going well. So hopefully these tips can help you grow as well. No, not hopefully, these will, if you actually do these properly, these will definitely help you grow, I promise. This video is gonna be big, but there are time codes all in the description. There are time codes in the top comment. Get yourself a coffee, I've got mine. And let's do the first tip, yeah? This first tip is gonna be the biggest tip of the five, and it's more of a story about how I got my first three to five viewers. But at the same time, I'd rather tell you the story and give you the, the concept. If you're like me, you've probably gone off and watched a bunch of tutorials and guides on YouTube about streaming. And so you've probably heard the advice build off the platform, build on a place that's more discoverable, not on Twitch, right? And that usually goes hand in hand with people saying to start a YouTube channel, where the discoverability, people say, is a lot better. And yeah, the discoverability on YouTube is better than Twitch, but I've been doing video production for seven years professionally. I've run YouTube channels for companies. I've literally studied YouTube SEO, so I understand the algorithm to an extent. You know, no one understands the algorithm. And I can honestly say to you, unless you are creating top quality gold content, or you have a very, very, very big site backing you, you will not be able to grow as fast as most people want to grow on YouTube. And you will not be discovered the way most people want to be discovered on YouTube. If you wanna get a couple viewers from it, it'll take a long time, the barrier for entry is huge, and I honestly don't recommend it, especially because most of you guys wanna do gaming, and gaming is so oversaturated these days. And that's fine to do wanna do gaming, but if the content is saturated, it makes it so much harder to be discovered. We're gonna talk about that in a bit anyway. So when I first started streaming, I knew I'd have to put in a lot of work to get my first few viewers. I'm a very realistic person. Not negative, but I'm very realistic. And I've watched a lot of Twitch, so I know it's not as easy as it looks from the outside. Truthfully, I looked at it and I realized that I had nothing unique to offer. I had no value for anyone. There was no reason for them to come to my zero viewer stream. So I thought, what is a game that I absolutely love that has a very passionate community around it? And the decision I came to was XCOM, specifically XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. So I looked for the passionate communities around this game that I loved. And I already knew of one, it was the subreddit. Uh, XCOM. And so I posted there asking for soldier suggestions because I wanted to do a playthrough of a campaign based around their soldiers. And I didn't just say it in a short post. I wrote a giant role play letter of recruitment, essentially, you know, I need you to save the world kind of thing. I gave them templates for everything I needed to make a good soldier after them. And I received over 200 plus replies. I replied to every single person. If they then replied to me, I replied back to them. Literally nothing went unanswered. I engaged directly with every single person. It took me literally hours and hours and hours and days worth of work. I created a Google Doc of every single submission and I started streaming to my new 200 plus viewers. Good night everybody, video's over, just do that. No, no, not at all. I didn't even tell them that I was streaming. That's right, I didn't tell any of these people I was streaming. I just went and streamed and did the characters and played the game and enjoyed it. After every stream that would only go for a few hours, I would write up a full list of everything that happened. The highs and lows, the, the deaths, the victories, everything that happened. I would do screenshots, clips. I would make this entire report essentially and then I'd do it as a story. I'd turn it into creative writing. It took me a very long time and then I would post 
a summary of that play session and put it on Reddit. And again, I didn't even tell them I was streaming. I just did it and the replies were great. People loved it. But after four or five streams, I started sneaking in a few Twitch links, okay? Not to the direct posts. What I did was I would have screenshots from the game or funny moments from the game in an IMGA folder linked in the post. And then in the description of these photos would be Twitch clips that would link out to go see the clip. So you might be thinking, why didn't you just put it in there? You probably lost so many prospective viewers. Nothing turns people off and makes them instantly not wanna do something as much as being sold to or advertised to. I wanted to bring real value to this community and give them something fun to enjoy. So I've talked a bit about how, how long this took me, but I wanna explain it properly. Before every stream, I did about 30 to 45 minutes of prep. This was writing out ideas, jokes, funny things that could happen. You know, if the game slowed down at all, I would then stream for two to three hours. I would then afterwards go directly into a write-up. I would watch the entire stream back while writing everything that happened, taking screenshots, making clips and highlights, which you can still see on my channel today but I spent hours and hours and hours on these things. And I'm not saying how long this took to brag or to say, woe is me, I had to put hard work in. I want you to have an accurate depiction of how much effort it goes in to start a community from scratch. And I want you to have context for where I started and what I did so that you can go off and do your own and understand that what you're achieving takes time. So did it work? Well, yeah, several people who enjoyed it came to check out the stream and they were greeted by two or three friends who'd been hanging out there with me. So in total, I went from having two or three friends watching to having six people watching, three people from Reddit. That seems like nothing compared to the hours I put in. But it's actually huge. It was massive. These were three random people on the internet who had no reason to watch me, who had come through because of the effort I put in. And that kind of set up my entire outlook for streaming. These amazing people became my first members of my community. I took these three people from Reddit, three of my friends, and I kind of bounced around a few games. I checked out Darkest Dungeon, another turn-based game. I checked out Subnautica and just a few other things. And I picked up more people as we went. I did XCOM for the entire time, but it slowly it teetered off as I didn't have enough time to go and post the actual things as the streams became more and more consistent. But really, I had enough viewers that the stream could grow from there, as long as I was picking the right category, which is another tip and we'll get to that in a bit. So my tip here, I guess, is to do something incredibly unique to stand out and get those first few viewers. And if you think that you can do that by starting a YouTube channel, then by all means, start a YouTube channel. The point of this isn't to bash those people who tell you to start a channel, it's to tell you to critically think about your skill set, find what works for you, and use that to build your audience. Okay, so that's the first tip done. Let's get into the second tip. Now I mentioned the category you stream in. This could be the game or the just chatting or IRL or anything else. The second tip is all about how to pick that. Now I often get streamers dropping into my stream because they find me through Stream Scheme, the, the website, through the guides or from the channel, okay? Now when they do, it's very obvious to tell who's there to advertise because they're not exactly subtle about it. We ignore those people, but then there are the people who come to chat and kind of swap ideas and kind of actually participate, I know, strange. And those people are the ones that after a stream, I'll always go check them out, right? I'm not saying I'm gonna follow for follow. I'm saying that I'll go and I'll be critical about myself and look at what they do and see if there's something that they do that I think I could do better or a tip that I could pass on in an article or something like that. And I'm always surprised to find these people who are clearly doing research because they've found me through Stream Scheme who are playing Valorant or Fortnite or Warzone or, or League of Legends and they have zero to three, possibly zero to five viewers. I think new streamers play these games because they really enjoy them and that is awesome. Play what you love, it'll really help you to grow if you're enjoying yourself. But you're not gonna get discovered in these categories. At least not as quickly as these people who are doing it probably want to be discovered or probably want to grow. Here is a question for the comments then. Why is someone going to scroll past someone with thousands and thousands of viewers to come watch your stream? And before you comment it, yes, people do like smaller communities. I like smaller communities. You can interact easier and honestly better in smaller communities. But why is someone going to scroll past 570 other streams, which are majority small communities, to come to yours? Because that's how many streams I had to go past when I was making this video to get to the people with five viewers. There was 95 rows of six streams a row before I reached people with under five viewers. 
And you're right, it's not all about the category browse page. You might get shown on the home page or in a search. And if the Twitch gods do decide to look down and say this person has a good chat, is a consistent streamer in this category, we should recommend them. You may appear in something like the recommended small communities tab. And that's awesome. But again, if there are 4,717 channels live in the category of Valorant when I made this video, and we know that around 570 of them were above five viewers, what is the actual likelihood that you're going to be recommended? No, seriously, what is that? I don't know the math behind that. I just know how to count, so I counted the channels. It took a long time. Personally, I think the reason people pick these games isn't to do with the fact that they enjoy them, it's to do with the fact that they're new or fresh, or they look and they go, that it's always in the top 20 games streaming on Twitch with thousands of people. But I think that's a terrible metric to go by. I think there's a much more powerful metric to pick a game to play by. And I think that metric is category followers. Category followers are the number of people who have clicked follow on a category, not a direct streamer. Uh, these people are going to get recommended this game or streamers playing this game on their homepage. They may also get recommended them without hitting follow if they could get recommended them just because they enjoy that category by watching it a lot, but I can't see that number. So I'm gonna go with category followers, okay? I was gonna look at something like Call of Duty 4 or any of those kind of series games because I mentioned Valorant and stuff like that, but really I couldn't see value in a lot of those smaller games despite the people who play them obviously love them. So I'm gonna go with a category that I know works because it worked for me and I've seen it work for a lot of small streamers. Stardew Valley, and I know it's not for everyone, but I'm just gonna use it as an example, okay? Stardew Valley took me from 10 average viewers to 25 average viewers. Some nights even as high as 35 average viewers. It was immense. It was incredibly strange for me to think that I was just playing this game, people enjoyed it. There was so much discoverability, I didn't understand why. Looking back, with a few more months under my belt, I do start to get it. So why is Stardew Valley good? Well, Stardew Valley has 798,000 category followers, which is, you know, a lot of people who wanna watch this game, who are gonna be recommended this game. The game has an incredibly active community, both modding, both on Discord, Pinterest, Reddit, everywhere I've looked, this community is incredibly passionate about this game. So that is really good, that's important. These people wanna play it, they wanna watch people play it, they wanna talk about playing it. The dev is still releasing updates for it, which means that every now and then a little bit of breath of fresh air comes to it, people pick it back up, they wanna check out the new update, but they don't wanna reinstall the game, so they check Twitch. But back to the numbers, the game averages 500 to 700 viewers in the whole category but you only need to have five viewers to get to the top three rows. Top three rows compared to top 95 rows, that's pretty good. And as I said, look, Stardew might not be your type of game, but that's fine. Use these ideas about why it's good and apply them to your niche, your categories, your fit, okay? Find things that people are passionate about that you also enjoy that has an active community and you'll probably grow a lot more. Alrighty, tip number three or point C, I don't remember what I was using, is creating a clickable stream. So if you're following our earlier advice in this video, then it means you should be in the top few rows of the stream, hopefully. Now we just need to make it so that people click your stream rather than the other streams and we should be good to go. So this is one that I learned pretty early on by accident, but essentially I made a joke before I had a camera that I streamed from a milk aisle because I just chug milk and dribble it down myself. Don't ask, when I didn't have a cam, I just kind of said whatever because it wasn't attached to me. That was a real mistake. But to kind of play into the joke, when I finally got a camera, I set up a green screen and I mean, I showed everyone that I do actually stream from a milk aisle. Yeah. As I said, I started this as a joke, but then I realized that I was getting a lot of click-throughs from browse and suggested pages because people just wanted to ask what the f I was doing. And I was turning these people who might not even click into clicks and then people who are gonna click from lurkers into chatters because they just wanna know, why am I streaming from a milk aisle in a Coles shopping center? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you need to have like a meme style background that's big enough that people are gonna click and come check out. I'm just saying, Think of something unique in your thumbnail that'll get people to drop by, okay? And if you do have a camera, stop putting it in the top left and bottom left of the screen. Your face will be hidden behind a live marker and a view count marker on the thumbnail. 
As soon as I realized that this milk aisle thing was causing click-throughs, I kind of realized I could expand it into my title. But I was trying to figure out what's something on the internet that people are passionate about and really get heated up over, but has absolutely no importance whatsoever so they can move on from it quickly. I kind of sat there, I thought about it for a while, and I realized, yeah, people on the internet either hate or love puns. There's no in-between. So I started naming every single stream, and at the time I was doing Stardew Valley, after a pun. That's right, literally every single one, and it worked. Honestly, sometimes the worse the pun, the more people I had coming in because they wanted to insult it. And I'd just do some goofy smile, laugh, and say that I thought it was great. Chat would talk about it a bit, and then we'd all just move on. It was awesome. Putting a pun or a stupid joke in the title essentially added content for my stream. It gave me more things to talk about. It made people join to say they loved or they hated it. it didn't really matter what they said, but if they said something, I could jump in and say, oh, you know, how's your day going? Or where are you watching from? Or anything like that, right? To make them feel included because that's what you want people to feel. You want them to feel included. You're streaming. And once they feel included, then they know that this is a place where people can chat, feel comfortable, and it's encouraged to talk. Just like how my stream at twitch.tv slash LJM underscore linked in the description is a cool, fun place to hang out. I'm live right now. Check it out. All right, ready? Hello, babe. How are you? <laughs> All right, so you found a unique niche. You're appearing at the top of a category that you've, you've chosen carefully. You've made your stream clickable. Now it's time to do something that I'm calling 2D branding. Now, I don't know if this exists. I haven't Googled 2D branding. So if this is actually something else and I've just stolen a name, sorry, this is just what I'm gonna call it, okay? Just roll with me here. 2D branding is the idea of branding yourself so that when someone joins, they instantly are in on the joke. They're instantly in on the community and they can kind of see it flat. And then as the longer they're there, it becomes 3D branding and they get to know you, they get to know your community and they become a part of it. But that first initial touch is so crucial. Why do you think that people have themes for their stream? And I don't mean your overlay. I'm talking about people who have their channel points set up to be cold brews or coffees, or they've themed it after entirely the 80s or retro or a certain type of game. Maybe it's only RTS, right? Maybe they only play RTS. Or you could be an idiot and name it all after milk for some reason. I don't know why you would do that. It'd lock you into a very strange situation where everything's milk related. You probably don't even like milk very much. The worst thing that can happen is to have new people feel like they're on the outside of the community. They need to instantly join and feel like they're a part of the community. I'd even go so far as to tell your, your regulars, your chatters, to be super welcoming to new people, okay? It doesn't have to be some stupid joke or theme at the end of the day. It just needs to be welcoming. It needs to be a place that people can go to and instantly feel like they're a part of, okay? It's crucial. So on to the fifth tip, and I know I said I was only gonna do five, but I've actually got a cheeky sixth one that I've come up with just during filming that I'm gonna give after this one. So fifth tip, I think this one people don't quite understand, and even those who do understand it don't really get the full extent of it, but a follower does not equal a viewer, and a viewer does not equal a community member, okay? Remember this. Something you might not know is that most people reach 50 followers before they reach five average viewers. Often you'll actually see people with 100, sometimes even 200 plus followers who still only average two or three viewers. So if you wanna grow your average viewers, then you actually need these people to come back to your stream. And to do that, well, you need to treat them like a person, not just a number that's popping up. If someone does rock up, ask how their day is going, where they're watching from, get to know them, ask them if they've played the game, do they enjoy it, what's the worst boss they versed in it, connect with them so they wanna come back. As you start to get more people, start hosting game nights every week or fortnight so that people have a place to come and hang out, create an environment where people wanna to go to. Two quick fire tips to help with getting people to return to your stream, and this one's pretty out there, is to come up with a schedule and stick to it. Having a consistent schedule that people can see and get a part of their routine is important. Think about when you watch your creators. Think about when you watch your YouTube videos. Every morning I wake up, I make a coffee, I get my Switch, I play Animal Crossing, and I watch the Yogg's cast on YouTube. It's a routine for me. I'm always there, I always come back to it. Set a routine, set consistency, and you will get people coming back to you. My second quick fire tip I'm not gonna go into, I'll do a whole video on it later if you want, is create a Discord. Set it up properly, put real work into it, make channels that are actually designed for certain conversations and topics, create rules and roles for viewers, regulars, subs, whatever you wanna do, but make somewhere where these people can go when you're offline and they can be a part of the community and interact with each other. 
And for those of you who have stayed to the end of this video, I'm sorry it was so long. My sixth tip just for you, think critically about your stream. I'm incredibly harsh on myself. I look at everything I'm doing wrong and I constantly try and improve it. If you stumbled across your stream in a small community, would you stay and watch it? Would you enjoy it? What could you do to make it more enjoyable or more watchable? Go watch people that have 20 more viewers than you, a thousand more viewers than you, and critically look at their stream and see what they're doing that might work for you. Is their audio better? Is their overlay better? Is their content just at its core more engaging? Think about it, work on it, and make yourself better. This video has gone on far too long, so I'm just gonna end it here. Subscribe if you got anything out of this video, like it if you enjoyed it, and comment your thoughts down below. It's not really a tutorial, it's more just the ways that I grew to where I am. So, I hope it helped. Do I just...